Hope, yes, hope, hope, in, the in the cave of good hope. We saw Pakwood, Kalk Bay, Winebed, Cape Town. Using the so scum on yeah. Cape Town. Yeah. Yes. Hey man, shout Looking out to amazing. Youngster CPT doing the most. Doing and the we thing. are XA, we're coming live to you all the way from the Cape of Good Hope. Hope, hope, hope. hope. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to it, everybody. It is a Thursday afternoon. Thank you so much to you and yours for choosing us as your source of information, entertainment, as well as education. It is Thursday. Yes. It is Talk a Thursday. We're talking everything under the sun. Should you wish to be part of our studio audience, you can email us at xa at kptv.org or call us on 021 The hashtag to use today is Talk Thursday. Yes. And today we've got loads of content to come to you. First of all, we've got Mr. Jerome Carlsa, who is from City Thighs in Cape Town. He's going to be speaking about us. So quite literally, things that are going to get lit in yeah. the studio. Mm. As well as Cindy and Uno Sebo, who are from uh, Fight for Peace. Uh -huh. uh, Fight for Peace International Program. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Also sitting down with us will be Sophia Mutala. Mm. And she's here from the Corruption Watch. She's the project manager over there. And also joining us will be Equal Education, yet to tell us Equal education. You can find us on Twitter using the handle XA underscore live. On Facebook, you are XA on Cape Town TV. www.capetowntv.org is where you can find most of our programming. When you can rather call us on 021 448 We do have a YouTube channel that is running. Subscribe and share. It's XA on Cape Town TV. Welcome to it, everybody. My name is Lama Lee Moon. And she is. I'm Landy Lezulu. And I'm Rizal, the Sheriff Forbes, and I'm super excited to be working with you, though. Me too. Very um, excited to be here. Thank yeah, you for having me again. I can't really see anything else other than Cape Town TV, but I can't mention where, though. We can't, we can't talk about those things, but yeah. I mean, we see each other in the streets. You know what I'm saying? So I am a man! That is where we love to be. That's where we love to be in the streets. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Adopted cousin, your adopted neighbor. Your cat, your dog. Everyone. Everybody. Cats watch the TV show? Cats. I love that. Rest everything. Make sure they tune in. We are it's celebrating. It's an incredible show. We are celebrating the Youth um, Green Month of June. Yeah. So if you wish to be a guest presenter like Olondi Lezulu, you can do so by sending us a clip. The email at capetowntv.org or lama at capetowntv.org. And if your clip is too long, it means that it's longer than three minutes. Do not do that. But if you have Sogeli Sai email, you can hop onto Facebook to Excel on Cape Town TV and slot in that clip. Maybe you could find yourself right here in this very space. Doing the presenting things just for everybody in South Africa. Channel 260 on your DSTV. Tell a friend, tell a friend to go to speak on Seek. Okay. 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 And guys, are you ready to extinguish the fire? So let's head on to the yellow couches, everybody. Hope, hope, Yes. So now we are going to be talking fire and rescue. What is that? Go to your seat. No, I am <laughs> so um, we're going to be talking about this is from the city of Cape Town, and we cannot wait to find out what fire and rescue services offer us in this month of June. So as by winter and Lela Klashalini in Siba Abandu Uche is in the winter because we are trying to get warm. There are safety measures that you need to follow, but should you find yourself in trouble, it's going to give us the numbers and how to protect yourself as well as your neighborhood when it comes to fire. Yes, ma'am, we're sitting down with Jermaine Carlson from City Fire and the Rescue. And I want to know from you, besides your day job and everything, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Glad that I could be on uh, Cape Town TV. Awesome, actually, sir. I think my daughter's actually watching. Today. Yes, oh, shout out to the daughter. Hello, daughter. <laughs> um, how does how does a day in your life look like mm. at the City Fire and Rescue? Um, is it just putting out fires? Are there other things as well? Is it easy, challenging? Take us through it. Yeah, there's a, a lot of things. Obviously, the operational guys they work a 24-hour shift. They okay. start nine o'clock. Like this morning, they started at nine. They'll finish up this tomorrow morning wow. at 9 o'clock. Mm. Yes, I work now office hours, 7.30 till 4. Lickety. So I'm <laughs> smell of smoke lately. But I'm sure you, you earned that spot. You earned yes, now I've been on operations for about 20 years. Right. I'm the class of 2000. So wow. I think wow. it's time for me also to have a day job. Okay. <laughs> so quick question. I know a lot of people don't think, well, I don't hear of fires a lot. I do hear of them now and then. But how often do you get fire calls? 
we get a lot of fire calls. Uh, the public normally sees it when there's big fires, maybe exactly. the mountain fires or there's informal structures. Mm -hmm. like. mm. We get on average about over almost 100 fire calls a day. What? But we also do medical calls that we people don't know, aren't aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. We do when there's accidents, the first people that you obviously see on scene will be the fire and rescue. Yeah, that is so true. The that ambulance, so true. ambulance uh, will be then notified if there's uh, serious injuries mm. and people need to be transported to hospital. Yeah, Mr. Um, Jermaine, um, we, you just answered the question about fire calls. Mm -hmm. Now, my interest is, um, why do we, wh why is it that you get so many fire calls, especially this season of the year? 99% mm -hmm. um, of fire calls are normally caused by a human intervention, mm -hmm. or be it neg negligent, deliberate, or accidental. Deliberate? Yes. Um, deliberate. We've now... I don't know if you're aware, the spate of uh, attacks on firefighters as well by mm. the protesters. Serious. We are the very people that we go out to help them. The people turn on us and some of the fires has um, gotten injured. Fire trucks has been damaged and Kukuleto fire station have been vandalized twice. Wow. Yes, lands down the road, Makassa, there's a lot of fire stations. I don't think that is normally in the news for people. And I would like to tell the people that we are not the enemy. The protesters, their gripes are on a different level. Yeah. So we come uh, to assist you or to help you. And now, at the back of our mind, we are now a little bit weary that maybe we're going to be course. attacked. Yeah. Of course. A couple of months ago, there was a shooting close to where a fire incident was. Wow. And I love how you, how you actually mentioned that we are not the enemy. They're yeah. not the enemy. And I mean, during these protests and things like that, um, Brits get thrown at the fire trucks, yeah. like yes, you say, yes. personnel get injured and all of those things. Mm. And you guys obviously have a certain budget as well, um, in terms of these are the amount of trucks you're getting, this money is allocated to Yes, that. Uh, How does that budget the, actually work? Is it included for those yes, things as well? Yes, the city of Cape Town, we've got, um, they, we get adequate budget mm -hmm. operating as well as a capital budget mm -hmm. to sustain us so that we can perform optimally throughout the financial year. Yeah. I like that. So, and we've got, um, if the one vehicle maybe gets damaged, mm -hmm. we've got the fleet where we can have spare vehicles. Okay. So there's never a chance that there won't be a vehicle yeah. available for the residents or the visitors of um, the city of Cape Town. Yeah. This can teach me, I think, to people who sense the danger of the job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When people apply for this job, do they actually know what it entails? Listen, a lot of people, they, they obviously watch Chicago Fire and, <laughs> yes. and yeah. other... Yes, because I'm thinking it's just, the <laughs> the <laughs> you know, just... Get out there, blow yeah. up the fire. Yes, but they don't understand. <laughs> they think it's an a, a, a accent activity. But yeah. the, long, the long, hard hours, I'm, yeah. I mean, mm. if you're lucky or fortunate enough to get recruited within the fire mm -hmm. service, it's about an 18-month program, wow. training program that you, uh, you are on. So that you can learn from the basics till the advanced yeah. level of, of firefighting. Wow. And um, it is not just putting the, the wet stuff on the red stuff. Of course. We've got divers, we've got skippers, we've okay. got uh, we've got rescue guys, we've got guys that uh, compete internationally. Yeah. Soon they will be going over to France. So wow. there's, a, uh, there's a lot of variety. That's why it's called fire, the fire and rescue. And rescue. And rescue. And rescue. I love that. Speaking um, p of people's um, influence and <coughs> thinking of what a firefighter is by watching television, are you guys always um, having a bow of a bow one in your pocket? Because you're <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay, <laughs> kidding. Um, um, that was not my question. My question, I want to find out, um, do you have the privilege of telling us um, which are the spots that are in your radar here in the Western Cape? That you, you know, when it comes winter season, you know that one day or another, we are going to get a call from those areas. And what would you like to tell the community and how can they protect themselves? Yes, obviously, in, in the winter, uh, winter period, people, they get cold. They want to eat themselves up, uh, make a fire, start a fire. Um, and those are the, the instances where a lot of fires happen, especially in informal settlements. But we've, the city's got the fine life safety educators that mm -hmm. go out to the communities mm -hmm. and we educate them using of uh, paraffin, flammable liquids, matches, lighters, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And there's a co campaign currently that we've got with, uh, involved with provincial government as well, where we go out uh, into the community where they get issued, uh, each household get issued with a smoke detector okay. as well as a fire extinguisher. Wow. So then uh, 
it's a very loud if you heard about the fi- uh, smoke alarm that loud yeah, yeah. Yes. That, yes. that will obviously wake you up of course and then if you have your if fire extinguisher you can uh, extinguish the fire of when course. you're still in, the, uh, in small, uh, fire, small they space. also get fire extinguishers yes a two okay. po- uh, 2.5 that fire is amazing extinguisher. and just listening to Jermaine actually I can hear that they actually have all of the ducks in a row because I mean like in anything any situation with theos is there but obviously you guys face some challenges as well take us through some of the challenges that you guys e, go through in achieving uh, as i mentioned now previously um, there's continual uh, continuous fire awareness programs throughout the year mm-hmm. and um, but still fires happen human intervention yes. but the latest bite uh, that is a real worry to us mm-hmm. is the attacks on our, on, on our firefighters yeah. that's one of the biggest challenges as i mentioned earlier if the community can just understand that we are coming to do a job yes we are trained that is what we're going to do we're going to uh, extinguish the fire we're going to save the lives and protect your property so that's but your we change. cannot do that if you are hampering us of course. even from entering your area yeah a lot of times we come in then we have to wait for an escort wow that takes time the, the longer <coughs> that we take the bigger the fire g- fire grows obviously of course wow wow that that is incredible so worst case scenario i have a heater and my house is on fire first thing do i try to put it out myself if i don't have an extinguisher or do i call you what yeah. is the best advice you can give if me? you have a fire extinguisher and phones obviously for a small fire that, then you can use it but if you're unable to in the first uh, few seconds then you have to call um the, uh, the number the number that people should suggest the people to call from a landline is 107 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's a call center in in goodwood to a man 24 hours 365 days a year and the other number that I would like the public to save on their phone, 021-480-7700. You save that, leave your husband, leave your, <laughs> your wife, the boyfriend, <laughs> put that in a safe as your number one. Because well, as soon as people see fire, they, they lose their minds. Yeah. Right. So just press one button, you don't have to dial seven or eight numbers, yes. you just dial, press one number. They and go to get help and immediately. And that makes the situation very quick and easy. And and easy, yeah. It, it, it's like international quality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jermaine, we're celebrating the youth um, this month, but it's very hard to celebrate people who are really, really struggling mm. because we, um, at the moment, the unemployment is over 27% and the unemployment rate is rising over 50% um, here in South Africa. So do you feel like as the Fire and Rescue Department are doing enough to appeal to the youth to come and be recruited and if that's the case how is your call and the yeah. responses from the youth yes we we, d- we have recruitment processes uh, I think annually um, there's one running now it started on the 10th of June it runs mm-hmm. up until Friday the 14th of June mm. and through the recruitment process we get thousands and thousands of applicants every year fortunate few make it into the fire service mm-hmm. um, obviously after strenuous assessments yeah. mm-hmm. they do the running I don't know if you heard about it you do the 2.4 running in 11 minutes for Jeez. male 13 minutes for female what? 50 push-ups <laughs> there's your sit-ups <laughs> and you have, have to carry two drums 25 kg drums up and down for 100 meters Ooh, that, that, can miss me. that is that is only the beginning uh-huh. then we have to see if you're not afraid of heights you yeah, go up a ladder yes. three stories if you're uh, afraid of small spaces so there's uh, the few that come in in this privileged job that's the the people also remain must see if you remain in the service. What's the most fulfilling part of the job? Mm. Oh, when people obviously say thank you. They come back to the station. Yeah. Or you hear that uh, a child that has been resussed is still loving. I the mother came imagine. back. I've got a st- uh, story. The, um, first of June, baby came into the fire station, couldn't breathe. The paramedics assisted her. There the baby's breathing and the mother is very yeah, Like those people, I'll have to thank you for now. Yes. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in right here on Excel. We'll be back right after this quick commercial break. Thank you so much for the job that you're doing. Thank Put out that fire! Dedicated to the youth of the show produced by the youth for the youth. So tell another youthful person around your community that the most hip and hot show in the motherland is live right now. And we're not going to leave you very soon. We're going to be here till the hour of five. And of course, tomorrow morning between seven and eight. And then we do it over again because we love you so much between four and five tomorrow. Um, that's when we close off City Siagu Weekend. We're celebrating the youth. Um, hashtag Youth Month. That's what we're doing send those clips that are not longer than three minutes to exactly and show us what you made of should you wish to be part of this 
awesome show. Um, and if you want to be part of our studio audience every Thursday right here on Cape Town TV, XA Live, it's XA at Cape Town TV. And of course, we can forward um, some of the topics that we have not covered yet and we wish that we can talk about it because they are pressing matters. Today, we're talking Corruption Watch, Fire and Rescue, as well as Fighting for Peace. I'm wondering, how do you fight and then you make it peaceful? So we're going to find out more <laughs> about that much, much later on. But today, right now, Kavisha Pile is here to tell us how do you watch out for corruption? Yes. Over there, with Luandile and Riza, the third... Ah, Shut what up. are you saying? <laughs> I'm, I'm saying Riza, <laughs> there. Little bit of a correction there, Lama. <laughs> it's not Kavisha, it's Sabia. Sabia, yes. Us. And she's the project manager, yeah, at um, Corruption Watch. And like I was just saying during the air break, that I never knew there's actually a Corruption Watch. I thought Same. people just switch. You know. You know, I just gonna switch on you. <laughs> but um, she's here to tell us more about that. And I want to know exactly what is the what is the role? What is the role? What, <laughs> what, what are you saying? What is the role? What is the role of the Corruption Watch? Yeah. Um, so talking about snitching, we kind of encourage people to do that, but in oh, for the right okay. reasons. Snitches okay. get stitches. So, hey. Now I'm interested. Correct Corruption Watch is an NGO uh, founded in 2012. We're based in Johannesburg, but we do work around the country. Oh, okay. So we encourage people to report incidents of corruption that they experience to us. And then from that, we draw out where the hotspots are and build campaigns, yeah. public mobilization campaigns around them, do selective in uh, investigations, mm -hmm. but also uh, there is some litigation that we also are involved in. All for the aim of trying to combat corruption of in course. South Africa. And, and on that, before you guys actually go on, mm -hmm. um, we're making the joke of snitching and people feel all the time. Snitches no, but get stitches. Yeah, I don't want to snitch. I don't want to snitch on my friends. Oh. Why, why is that notion? Why do you think that people think it's something bad? Um, I think because maybe then people are involved in it for the for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's why there's an element of you know, <laughs> scariness or yeah. sneakiness. Mm. No, we, we think that um, people are victims of corruption in this yeah. country a lot. Definitely. Anywhere from in our healthcare system to traffic and licensing, yeah. right. um, in education. And we want these victims to report to us of so course. that we can try and hold the relevant government departments accountable for the fact that they're not you know taking action or taking a strong stance in uh -huh. some cases. Right. Okay. Question before we move on. What is corruption according to Corruption Watch? So the definition yeah. that we work off, so we're a, trans a chapter of Transparency International as well, mm -hmm. and our definition of corruption is the abuse of entrusted power for okay. private gain. So the idea is that you've been trusted with power over resources yes. or decision making, and you abuse this for your own personal benefit or right. for the benefit of someone you know. Yeah. Right. So Baha, um, all eyes are on the inquiry of the state um, capture. Oh, interesting. I want to find out where do you guys stand? So Corruption Watch is firmly for the exposure of the truth. And yes, this is what yes. a commission of inquiry is all about. Right. Mm. It's about finding out what actually happened. And I think we're also looking forward to see whether our criminal justice system will pick up on all of this yes. evidence that's being exposed and, you know, take steps to hold people accountable and mm. hopefully maybe get even, you know, get some of those public funds back that have been taken away from our fiscus. Yeah. Who do you feel that should have been held accountable and is not at the state? Mm. Sorry, say that again. Hmm, I'll repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it again. Yeah, I'll Who do you, as not, not mm. you personally, but mm. as Corruption Watch, feel that should have been held accountable for doing this and that, but has not yet been? And why? Um, I think there are a lot of people implicated in the Zondo Commission of mm -hmm. Inquiry. Um, I think it's also left to the, to the courts and the criminal justice system to decide yeah. who should be held accountable and mm. how. And I think for us, it's really, you know, we have a new head of the NPA. It's about us being those watchdogs and yes. making sure that they are hopefully taking steps towards prosecuting mm -hmm. people yes. who've been right. named um, as, you know, potential, um, their allegations yeah. against them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and there's obviously lots of forms of um, abuse of power. Mm. And I actually want to know from you, what's the difference between um, maladministration and corruption, actually? So, um, corruption has that element of... Uh, uh, private gain. There's uh -huh. something you're getting out of this corrupt activity. Right. So in some cases, maladministration can constitute corruption okay. if there's some kind of you know private gain. In other yes. instances, it's just maybe incompetence or laziness or a lack yeah. of wanting to follow due procedure mm -hmm. for whatever other reason. Okay, yeah. but okay. it can be. A bit yeah, so we do sometimes <laughs> see be. maladministration, you know, for the purposes of, so you know, you, you tell me you're going to give me some money. Yes. I don't make a certain process happen yes. you know right. or if i change it or do it in the wrong way yes. so that can be maladministration but there's that element of me getting something out of yeah. it yeah 
Wow, I just realized that my mom was misstrate a lot. <laughs> I'm joking. Are you going to, um, are you heading to the Gauteng High Court anytime soon? So that actually happened yesterday. Okay, um, what happened? So Corruption Spill. Watch um, actually was asking the court to declare the Seriti Commission of Inquiry um, as findings as yeah. void. Yeah. Um, for the reasons that um, the commission itself wasn't conducted properly. So there was evidence that came out that wasn't considered, or there were okay. witnesses that withdrew because they, they said that the, the commission had sort of other intentions yes. and it wasn't about finding the truth. Right. Yes. So that's the reason we were in the high court yesterday. Okay. Oh, so wait, so that's the process. So you guys get people to snitch or rather to <laughs> tell the truth. <laughs> to tell the truth. <laughs> I think that's what right. it's saying. Tell the truth. It's okay. about the truth. Yeah. You get people to tell the truth, then where do we move on from there? So the commissions of inquiry are really about that, about giving, uh, calling people forward to give evidence on certain issues. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you know, then it's in the hands of the NPA or right. the criminal justice system to take steps. How, so with the Sarita Commission, a lot of people were exonerated because due process wasn't followed. Mm. So the, the purpose of going to court yesterday was to try and actually say, you know what, that process wasn't good enough. Yeah. We right. need to do it again. Right. Um, and then people who maybe should have been called to give evidence, such as the former president, Jacob Zuma, mm -hmm. can now be called forward right. to discuss, you know, if he had a role in it and what that role was. Yeah. Mm. Um, Ulwandile uh, mentioned earlier on that snitches get stitches. Mm. So I want to find out from you, Shabaha, um, how safe do you feel doing mm. the kind of job that you're doing? Because mm. you're yeah. exposing yeah. people yeah. who do not wish to be found yeah. Yeah. at all, yeah. at least yeah. by you. Yeah. So I think that's an excellent question. And for us, it's actually our whistleblowers, yeah. the people who report to us, that whose safety we are concerned with. Yeah. You know, right. We kind of have, well, Corruption Watch has a big reputation in the media that mm. kind of forms a layer of protection. Yeah. But for our whistleblowers, we allow you to remain anonymous if, you, mm. if you'd if you like to report to us. Yeah. So there isn't, I mean, we try to, you know, take away that element of danger by yeah, allowing you to course. remain anonymous. Of yeah. course, which is but very important. But then, you know, talking about corruption and exposing it always take some bravery and we we like to encourage that we like you to be an active citizen yes. who cares about bettering our nation and therefore that courage is really encouraged of course. and now the viewers thinking okay so if i do snitch or tell the truth i'm safe because mm. like you mentioned it's anonymous yeah it's anonymous mm. and the safety comes first mm. so let's say for instance i'm somewhere out and about and i actually witness some form of corruption. How do I then go about in reporting it to you guys? Mm. So we have a toll-free number, which is 0800 023 456. Mm -hmm. You can also report on our online form on our website, which is www.corruptionwatch.org.za. Mm -hmm. We also have a WhatsApp line because okay. WhatsApp is very accessible, which yes. is 072 013 5569. So you can call, you can WhatsApp, um, and then our website also has the information of email uh -huh. or other or fax as well. I mean, some people still use fax. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I'm snitching on, I'm snitching on girls. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Most of our viewers, Shabaha, are youth, and we're always looking out um, for them. Mm -hmm. we, we've got their backs. Um, some are unemployed, some are looking for a career path, and they have not yet found it because they do not know what speaks to them. For instance, if they were watching this segment here with you and they feel like this speaks to me, yeah. I would love to work for or with Corrupt Watch. Um, are there um, programs in place for somebody like that who would love to work um, with your organization? Yeah. And if so, what are they and how do we get in touch? So again, all of our contact information is on our website. Mm -hmm. um, our office number is 011 if you want to call us as well. Um, we love working with youth. Yeah. Um, we think they're a, an important audience for us because the future of our country will be built by yeah. the by youth. Of course. Yeah. And the culture of the country in the future will also be determined by the youth. Yeah. So we run um, advocacy workshops, training workshops, to try and teach people how to speak out against corruption and build programs in their own societies. Yes. We also try to host integrity lectures where we bring young people to meet influential leaders in the fight yes, against yes. corruption. We do also work with schools sometimes um, to host debates on All corruption, right. to get young people thinking about it and talking about it. And you know, as a young person, how can you combat it? Even as a school child, how does it affect you yes. and how you can work to try and combat corruption? All right. Did that famous chant um, come with Corruption Watch? Pay back the money! <laughs> Pay back. I think that was a collective call of frustration oh, okay. from the people of South Africa. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it was catchy. It was catchy. It, really yeah. was. it, it, it was. Now Thank you go you to so the much. club and they play that. <laughs> they take back the money in the club. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but man. The last thing, I think um, most of us always question as to why corruption is important to us as the youth. Quick last words. Why do you think corruption is affecting us individually? One word. One word. Oh, uh, lack of socioeconomic <laughs> justice, I would say. Okay, okay. I'm going to go Google that in the kitchen for you. While we do that, we're going to take a little bit of a break, but see you after this. Yes, Google it to Prince KD. Nande, Google it. Oh, man. Nande, Google it. 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 So we know that you're watching. Thank you for tuning into Channel 263, as well as Deb and Kimberly, KwaZulu Natal, um, Gauteng in Pretoria, or Joburg, or my gang. We know that you're watching. I think, Tim, thank you for tuning in to Cape Town's biggest youth show. No, South Africa's biggest youth show. Yeah. We are the best thing this side of the equator. That was Prince KB, yes it was, with Gugule too. Speaking of Gugule too, we've got um, Shandy in the building, Donosipo Wakundiki, who are here to tell us about Brooks United Youth Council. There's something special happening on the 17th, which is on Monday, the day after Youth Day. So we go straight to the yellow couches and the first answer I want Shandy to let us know in. Shandy, welcome to the show first and foremost. What's happening on Monday, Ekuguletu, since we just played uh, Prince KB? Yeah, Ekuguletu. Um, what's happening on Monday is we're having an event that we just um, celebrating the youth in uh -huh. Kuguletu, not mm. just the bad things, but the good things yes. also. Mm. Like, we're celebrating music, art, drama, and young business and what's happening in the youth. Mm. Where, where is it happening? It's happening in Sport Complex, NY2. Okay. Is what complex it is? It's a NY1 lab building. Yes, but it's in NY2, but it's behind NY1. Okay, I see what you're talking about. Iguko entrance fee? No, entrance fee is free. Free of charge. Oh, entrance fee is free. From what time to what time? From 9 a.m. in the morning to yeah. 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Are you giving us food? Free food? How? To How? But come and see, then you will. Yes! I love that. Absolutely. <laughs> love it. We are giving you entertainment. There will be jazz, there will yeah. be hip hop, there will okay. be dancers, professional dancers. Ooh. So we are giving you a lot of entertainment as well. I love okay. that. I love not, that. Just, not just any dancers, professional, professional dancers. dancers. Okay. I love that. So, Sinasipo, what influenced that event? Particularly, um, that influence is influenced by the voices of the youth mm -hmm. of the youth council. Uh -huh. It's a Kuguletu youth council that is formed by all members of the youth from the collective of organizations that we are working with. Mm -hmm. and we are trying to engage youth so that they get away from the crime and violence. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it comes from them that they, they need to celebrate all the achievements of all the young people that are in Kukuletu because course, they are doing very yeah. well instead of highlighting all the crime yes. and the violence that is currently yes. happening. And by engage around Jansis, like what are the things that you guys take part in as Kukuletu? Uh, these young people, we make sure that they are going to their own individual organizations, yeah. right. the collective of organizations uh -huh. that forms Google to United Structure. Okay. In this organization, we have, we have about partners, about 12 partners mm -hmm. that are currently there, which is Project Playground, Ikamba Labantuana, E-Oasis, uh, E-Amanda, uh, e mm -hmm. uh, all those organizations, those that I've mentioned, and right. much more of those, yes. right. they engage youth in sport, in oh, dancing, okay in a lot of things yeah. so right. that they, they are kept away from wow. the crime and violence. I love uh, the fact that you guys do so much things involving the youth and that actually gives you as someone who's part of the youth something to look forward yeah. to and you guys are also having yeah. the young achievers. Tell us more about that. In this event that we are hosting, this is hosted by the Google Youth Council. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have young achievers that we have identified and right. we we, we try to mobilize all of those that have achieved yes. in Kukuletu communities as well as in crossroads and surrounds. Yes, those yes. young achievers are young people that have achieved and have their own innovative businesses. Yes. Mm -hmm. They have achieved in sport, they have achieved in dance wow. and in all different sectors. So on that on that mm -hmm. day they will be inspiring and motivating yes. all young people that will be in attendance in that event on the 17th. I love that, and celebrating so the achievements and the yes. positivity. It's amazing. Yeah. That is so amazing. So how do you join one of these organizations? Let's say I'm a young child and I've never heard of this before. Yeah. And how do I make sure that I connect with everyone that's in my community? Mm. Everyone 
that is Kukuletu. Right. If you are a youth, this organization, this collective is called Kukuletu United. Mm. It has all of these organizations yeah. around Kukuletu and in Crossroads right. and New Cross. Mm -mm. Any young person, whether you are working, whether you are uh, out of school, mm -hmm. if you want to go to any of those, you can go just and check what are your skills and yes. what you can fit into. Yes. Right. You can do sport if you want to do sport. You can you can be also be, be prepared uh -huh. to, to, to for, for work readiness. You right. can also do anything that you want to do according to what you need yes. as a young person. And, and, mm. and Shane is part of the um, Google AT United as well. I want to hear from you. How has being a part of it actually changed your life? Mm. And why would you say people at home should or join in? Yeah. It's like for me going every friday to these meetings and meeting new people mm -hmm. and meeting that you're not the only one that's going through of the course. struggle yeah, yeah. that happening in our townships like kukuletu is actually one of the biggest townships it is in south africa but most people don't recognize that because only bad things are happening yes. so mm. that's where we come together as a team and just to express ourselves and share ideas how to make the our place kukuletu mm -hmm. our home a safe and better place for young children after us of course i yeah. love that, that is, i love that <laughs> <laughs> i love that and these two events come from them is their initiative the one on the 17th to celebrate young achievers mm -hmm. and we're having another one because this youth month on the 29th of june as well on that one we want to make sure that young people can cope with their problems yes. with their challenges with their stress with their depressions so it comes out of their need and exactly what they want we want their voices heard of through course. the youth council yeah initiative so you are bringing on board um, young achievers so what will the young achievers role be come monday what will they be doing there uh, on that day we expect them and who are they Yes, we expect them to be able to uh, inspire the young people right. to also tell them about their challenges and how they have overcome them mm -hmm. as well as to make sure that anyone can do it, they can do at attitude. Yes. Don't let your situation define who you are. Of course. So all these young people will be able to inspire all those that are there. And the most importantly, all those that will be there are young people that have achieved in businesses. They have their own in innovative business. Yeah. Mm. They achieve in sport. They achieve in music. They have their own NGOs as well. So come on Monday and you will see and be inspired <laughs> by all these young people that will be there. Absolutely. Are you perhaps, guys, on social media platforms so that we know where to go, how to go, when yeah, to go? to find you. Mm -hmm. Yes. The young people has a Facebook page. Uh -huh. It's called Gooks United uh, Youth Council page. It's on mm -hmm. Facebook. We are also had a, we have a, net, a network where we also have a, 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 a WhatsApp group okay. where we have all young people that can join in that mm -hmm. WhatsApp and then we, 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 we say everything that we want to say, information ab about what is happening and of what course. is going to take place. Yes. Sandy, we quickly going to an ad break. Do you have a message for the youth before we let you go? For youth I day? just want to have the message to the youth is stop being bored and have fun and enjoy yourself and mm. enjoy home. Yeah. yeah. Is this uh, for me, I want to say that the youth must take pride in themselves. Yeah. yeah. Because everything depends on them. The youth is our future. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Thank you guys so, so much for joining us. You guys are doing an amazing, yeah. phenomenal job. Really and I'm sure Google Lady, you guys are very proud, proud of these two. Listen, we're going to take a quick breather. When we come back, we have more for you right here on XA. The biggest, the baddest, and the most hip and happy, happy show. on your screen. We'll see you now. <laughs> Believing that the fun is right here in front of the screen, you should come here and observe behind the screen. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, I tell you what a crazy bunch. We've got Devon behind that camera, Pindi Leve, as well as Ulu Zugo and the rest of the lunatics. In the control room, I did not call them that. Welcome back to the biggest, the baddest, and the most heap and happening show in the month. land. My name is Lama Lee Moon. I'm joined by Rwandi Lezuru, who is our guest presenter for today, as well as Wiza, the Sheriff Forbes, right here on XA. So now we're talking equal education and what um, e youth has done. We led 25 years of our so called democracy. So from equal education, we've got Uliama, who's gonna about all of what we're going to be talking about so let's head on to the local countries remember hashtag to use for today is hashtag 
Talk Thursday. Welcome to XA. Yes, man. Talk Thursday. That is what we're doing on XA right about now. Yeah. And during the air break, Yem actually told me she's family of Shoma Josie. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. we're speaking everything. We know these are facts. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. It's just a bird that yeah. told us that. Yem, welcome <laughs> to it. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Um, thank you so much. I feel so nervous. No. Oh, no, girl. <laughs> But you good. You look but so I'm calm. Good, yeah. You look so good. <laughs> Tell us more about equal education. What is it that you guys do? Because I'm thinking equal education, but there might be some sort of fight corruption as well. You know, <laughs> tell us. Um, okay, equal education. It is a movement of learners, teachers, um, as well as parents and community members. Okay. We are located in five provinces. Oh wow. Um, being Gauteng, Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. um, is um, Western Cape as well, and um, other other two, um, which are KwaZulu Natal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but one of our umbrella um, campaign is uh -huh. norms and standards. Okay. So we actually fight for um, quality education mm -hmm. through activism. Yeah, and you mentioned one of your umbrella campaigns is norms and um, standings. standings. Do you guys have different campaigns running each yes, year? Yes, in each province we have different campaigns. Um, for example, here in the Western Cape, mm -hmm. we have the safety campaign. And then in each provinces, we do have each different um, campaigns. I love that. Okay, yeah, I'm which grade um, are you doing? I'm currently doing grade nine this hey, year. Hey, grade ah. nine. So yes. I'm sure that you know I'll your fight, ministers. Grade nine. Right? Our youth. Our youth. You, you know your ministers. Our youth. Yes, okay, you. I don't know if it's safe to ask you, but are you happy with the re-election of Minister Miss um, Angie as well as Miss Debbie? Uh, how do you feel about those re-elections? Um, okay, with the elections, I would say that it's not that I feel happy or not, because I'm not only judging about who's in and who's not. Yeah. I'm only about who am I going to hold accountable. Yes. 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 Come on. Because um, Miss Angie Mutsecha, we know that she said the norms and standards that she was talking about earlier on, so we'll be able to hold her accountable, accountable. saying that, ma'am, this is what you said. Mm. This is the deadline that yes. you set for yourself. So are you meeting that at the end yes. of the day? Mm. Wow, so man. I'm it. watching her so guys, proud. Open, like, oh my open gosh. Open high. <laughs> if you're watching the principal, she should be in grade 12 tomorrow. Honestly, <laughs> like, <laughs> put her going. Put her going. Just her give her a matrix certificate. That is what we So, Pasalula, it's only 33% that is required to <laughs> pass matrix in South Africa, by the way. It's so crazy <laughs> to sit here and watch a young person speak so highly and also yeah, like things she, that i don't know she, exactly she wants people to be held accountable okay wait <laughs> you spoke about you holding people accountable but you're using it with activism how yeah. does that go how do you do it as a student for example mm. um we do it through peaceful marches and we go to each school to find out what the issue they are are currently facing All right so we call um ourselves equalizers so if an issue comes up currently at their school mm -hmm. they'll open a campaign to address that issue yeah and, and i love how you mentioned peaceful martyrs because i almost thought you were part <laughs> of the fire and rescue problem no, where they actually no, throw no, no, <laughs> stuff. yeah but do you think we as youth are doing enough in our communities playing our role as youth i would say we are because you know that there's this term that the youth are sitting, they're not doing anything, yeah. they're lazy. But no, there is the other youth that's working. Yes. They're working for quality education. Yes. Yeah. education in, yes. in each and every school. But I would like to call upon each and every child to please be with us. Fight for quality education. Fight for what is not what is wrong in your school. Don't just sit down and yes. do nothing. I'm sure you ace all the idols at Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Wow, <laughs> Liama, I don't want to be reckless and compare you guys because you said peaceful marches. I don't want to offend anybody and say you youth of 1976 yeah. same level and stuff like that but there are some similarities yeah, yeah. because you're advocating for what the youth want now mm -hmm. just like what the youth wanted back then mm -hmm. so what would you say that you guys are taking from them and you are implementing that yeah. today mm. Um, I would say that in t today we're still fighting for that in each and every school there must be equality. Yes. 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 That is what that's our most focused on. How are we unequal? We are unequal seeing from that there's schools in maybe in the townships that don't get the same um, recommendations yeah. and the same um, qualifications when it comes to entering yes. um, varsity mm. and right. stuff. So there's still that 
inequality between township schools and schools in the suburbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you didn't just wake up one Monday morning and say, ah, I'm going to fight for rights. <laughs> no. What influenced that decision? Yeah. What influenced my decision of being an activist is that I told myself that an injury to one is an injury to, to all. all. I love that. Because oh, I, I, I might sit that. at my school and be like, okay, we're not overcrowded. Um, we get everything we want. But what about that child yeah. that wakes up every day at school and knowing that they might get to school robbed uh, and something like that might happen to them. They don't know nothing. But I know that as I am fighting for the, our rights as school, as um, scholars, mm-hmm. I know that what I'm fighting for will succeed. Absolutely. And I so love good. that. You, sh- so you, you should write a book mm. because you speak so well. well you speak mm. so amazing. And I love how you are kind of the, the voice mm. for our youth today. And because it is Youth Month and the guys at home are watching, is there any message that you would like to give for the youth um, um, in Zanzi? For the youth, I'd like to say that don't just sit back. There's still hope. With education, we can succeed. We can fight everything. But without education, there's nothing that we can do. There's no way that we can go. I love how you knew to look in that camera. (laughs) Come on, girl. (laughs) Send us your clip. Come guest present. We need you. (laughs) Oh, well. Um, Is there something that you've already placed in your mind that I want to study this um, when I'm done with my metric? Because I see you as a parliamentarian already oh, yeah. because there's that 22 yeah. year old um gunning for the eff in parliament exactly. um what are you studying after matric i'll study public relations whereby i'll be able to to stand in parliament yes yes, yes. as the next on, uh, minister of education oh man oh. Oh, i am so nice. proud I am so like I feel like our future is in the right hands. It I is. feel like we're it safe. Is. Like I know for sure I'm not doing enough, but I mean, there's you. someone who is doing there enough. Is okay. It is the Amen. youth month. How do you encourage um other young people that are watching us right now? How do you encourage them to take on the right steps? Or if Abanazi's steps to take to follow on your footsteps, how do you encourage them since we're celebrating you? Yeah. Um, I believe that they should take a stand. This is our time. This is our generation. We're not only um, doing for us, we're also doing for the next generation also so that they don't suffer under the same things that we Mm. suffered as well. So how are you celebrating June 16 on Sunday? Um, We'll be wearing our school uniform Uh and um, we'll be taking action also on the 18th of June whereby we will... um, we want to speak to the president um, if we get that chance about the the letter that we wrote uh-huh. yeah. to him that the norms and standards they mustn't forget about them. They should meet their deadlines. Wow! Well. Listen, wow. man, thank you so so much for coming thank and you. blessing thank us you. with your presence at the X A headquarters. <laughs> don't forget to write the book. Don't forget to go to Matric. I spoke to your pres- principal. <laughs> yeah. And also, don't forget to come guest present. Thank you so much for coming and yeah. sharing everything all your knowledge, all your activism that you are doing. And now because Shoma Josie is your cousin. We're going to play some Shoma Yeah, Josie. just for you. <laughs> just for her. Just, be, just, just for because her. I mean, it's the only thing we can do. And, and it's out, time man. for us to bounce out of here, right? Yes. And tomorrow we've got Sounds of the South. We're having a listening session with the band, you guys, from 4 to 5. They are not going anywhere. Five or six songs or seven songs. Do you know the band? Follow them on Facebook, it sounds of the South. Request a song via XA on Cape Town TV. They might sing it for you. Yes, you absolutely, absolutely. Are you excited? I'm super excited. Mm. It's out that excited for anything to do with the band. And remember, follow us on all of our social media handles on Facebook, XA on Cape Town TV, on Twitter, at XA underscore live, YouTube, XA. How do they guest present? They send a three minute video, not more, uh, to at XA. At KTOWTV.org. Kiltown Kiltown Remember, guys, I was here. I sent the video, so it is indeed possible. You can do it too. Please be stitching and shaking. Absolutely. It's time to talk to your cousin us. now. I do you so much, Josie. This one's